The World Adventurers Club greets you once again. Its members are always eager to hear the varied experiences of their comrades. And at this meeting, we find their attention focused on a dark, suave-looking gentleman, quiet yet alert, whose piercing eyes are now laughing. Captain Fabian of the French Secret Police. Well, oh, oh, what are you on? <laughs> you know, Captain Fabian, your presence gives a continental touch to our lounge. We're honored to have you with us, sir. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. But it is I who should be honored at being invited to join your membership. The club is known all over the world. For the most part, we have succeeded in our professions because of physical endurance and knowledge of the countries in which we work. But in your case, as a member of the secret police, you must virtually live by your wits. Uh, correct, uh, to a certain degree, Mr. Jones. One in my profession is supposed to have a heart of steel and the brain of a superman. But there are times when the cold heart is moved. And the Superman is merely a man after all. Well, that sounds as if you might have a story for us, Fabian. And since you mention your heart, I might add, Cherchez la femme. <laughs> your deductions are startling, Mr. Chairman. I thought that I knew my business, but in comparison to you, I am but a novice. Oh, well, how do I say that? However, there was a lady in this case. And because of her, that adventure shall always remain in my memory. Mm, well, the story, the Captain. Captain. The story. Very well, gentlemen. It was about uh, three years ago. I was returning to France on the Continental Express. The job had been a difficult one, but successful. And as the train neared the French border, I sighed with contentment. Soon I would be in La Belle France, and I looked forward to a good vacation with all the luxuries I had been without for the past week. Wine, song, and a lovely lady. <laughs> well, I was coming to that. Just as I was relaxing in the privacy of my compartment, there came a knock at my door, hesitant, fearful. I opened it, and there stood a woman, her magnificent eyes bright with terror, her face a frozen mask of fear. May, may I come in for a moment? Why? Please don't refuse me. I must talk to you. Of course. Come in. Please be seated. I, uh, I cannot help but notice that you are frightened. Will you have some wine? Yes, thank you. You seem to think that I can be of service to you. Oh, I know what you are thinking. All men know me for what I am. A parasite to be found in all the playgrounds of the wealthy. Monte Carlo, Nice, Rome, Paris. But I don't care what people think anymore. I live only for one thing. Your wine, madame. Oh, thank you. You are very kind and very understanding. But I am going to ask even more of you. I am at your service if it is within my power. Ah, I knew you would help me. There is something in your eyes. Let us go to my compartment. I do not feel safe here. You are perfectly safe, my dear lady. Can we not talk here? We shall reach the border soon. I know. Uh, we must hurry. Hurry? Why? What frightens you? Frightened? Oh, I am not frightened. But please come with me. It is only for a little while. Very well. Please, don't lock the door. But, madame, you cannot expect me to leave my compartment without locking it. Anyone can come along this corridor, enter, and rob me of my few valuables. But you see, I, there is a friend of mine in my compartment. Would, would it be asking too much of you to allow him to stay in your room while we talk in mine? I don't want him to hear. Where is your compartment, madame? Here. Hmm, the second from mine. I shall lock my door. Then we shall talk over the matter of exchange with your friend. I know that my demand sounds insane, but I am desperate, desperate. I quite understand. Ah, here we are. Eric, it is Catherine. Very well. Eric, this gentleman may be able to help us. I was hoping that you could stay in his compartment until I explained Just to him... Just why do you want me to take his place until we get over the border? What? Just what do you mean by that remark? Do you take me for a complete fool, my friend? Madame Subterfuge would not fool a peasant. She trembles when I mention crossing the border. Why should she bring me here and send you to my compartment? Is it because we resemble one another? Eric! Hush, Catherine. Since you have guessed our plan... 
I will reveal why we attempted to gain your aid. You see, we are on our honeymoon and have heard that friends will stop the train at the border and try to part us. Yes, that's it. And we don't want to be parted on our honeymoon, you know. Your acting is superb and might have fooled me had I not known your highness. Uh, you recognize me. Who are you? Captain Fabien of the French secret police, madame. And it is my business to know the movements of European royalty. I know that his highness has been exiled. That is no crime. Granted. But if such is the case, why do you want me to take his place? To be sure, I resemble him in build and coloring, even to the mustache. You attempted to trick me into being with you when the train is stopped. Why is the train being stopped? I shall tell you the truth, Captain Fabian. Very kind of you, since it seems to concern me so vitally. <gasps> my people agreed to give me freedom if I left the country. Since Catherine has been my only solace in my darkest hours, I determined to take her with me in an attempt to regain some semblance of happiness. But a short while ago, a loyal friend sent me word that the express is to be stopped at the border. I am to be kidnapped, taken away and murdered. Why? Since you have agreed to go into exile? The new party has decided to take no chances. Since a member of the royal house is still alive, the Republic can have no safety. If they kill me, they kill the monarchy. I am the last of my line. Oh, Captain Fabian, if you have any mercy, help us, help us. Your means of seeking aid was scarcely a happy one. I know, but I was mad with terror. I love Verry. I love him more than anything in the world. And I'd do anything to save him, to understand anything. Even to killing me? If it were necessary, yes. Catherine, my dear. Oh, my lieber, do you think I will allow them to stop us now? Just when happiness is in sight. Do you think I have lived in terror and heartbreak these past months to allow a few hours to take everything from me? My dearest. The train. It is stopping. We must have reached the border. Captain Fabian, what are you going to do? Dear Catherine, do not forget the captain has a code of ethics. His duty. What do I care about duty? Has duty turned his blood to ice? His heart to stone? Has he never loved that he can stand aside in the name of duty and allow an honorable gentleman to be murdered by a assassin? Who makes you the best? They are here. Eric, beloved, the time has come. <laughs> Bravely, darling. Smile, as I am smiling. Who makes? Who makes? One moment. Quick, Your Highness. Behind those curtains. When I leave the train, go to my compartment. Here's the key. Send my luggage to the main office in Paris when you are safe. Until then, use my name. God bless you, Captain. How can we thank you? Quick, quick. His hat and coat. I'll wear them out. Pull the hat down. There, so. Now, will I pass for him? Yes. Good. Now, I am Eric. Dry your tears. Smile. I'm going to open the door. Ready now? All right. Ah, gentlemen. I wondered why the train stopped and donned my hat and coat to see what is wrong. A hold up, perhaps? An accident? No, none, monsieur. Merely some trouble over your luggage. If you will kindly leave the train and identify your baggage. I'll see you off the train, dear. No, no, you'll catch cold, Catherine. Please. Here. You descend from the train at the door, monsieur. Madame must stay inside. Very well. I shan't be long, dear. Godspeed, my beloved. <laughs> you see, gentlemen, what a fortunate man I am to have such a love. Yeah, really, yeah, yeah, yeah. One moment. Before you leave me, even for a little while. Yes. You aren't going far. You shall be safe, but one kiss before you go. My dear. Good Lord, you were taking a chance, Captain. Weren't those assassins angry when they found out they had been tricked? Well, I played what you call dumb. I showed them my credentials and said Catherine and I had been together during the whole journey. Well, you certainly had your with you. In view of my papers, they took it for granted that someone had given them false information. Well, but, uh, you know, just what happened then? You know, hired murderers never have a great amount of intelligence. They never think, but only do as they are told. Well, that's a comforting thought. <laughs> They weren't bad fellows for that time. They even went so far as to drive me to the nearest civilization, 
hope to get in my favor that way, I imagine. Mm -hmm. Good heavens, what iron nerve. No, no, not at all. Almost every man is a murderer at heart sometime or other in his life. As long as it isn't directed at you, why worry about the time when it might be? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes, but you know, it might have turned out differently. You risked everything for an exiled king. Ah, uh, not quite, my friend. You forget the kiss. <laughs> Everything risked for a kiss. The gallant captain has won the admiration of his comrades, for they also know that duty is not always justice. Join them again at the next meeting and listen to another strange adventure in a strange land. <laughs> <laughs>